Good evening, everyone. This is Spirit Journey. I'm going to talk about a another controversial subject about HIV, and is this an equal opportunity virus? What you see now on the screen, this is a website of this clinic that. I walked by today as I was walking my dogs. It's a clinic that's in Manhattan and it offers many, many services. It's a really nice building, I think two-story building. It looks very clean and modern. And yeah, this is what you this is it right here. Unfortunately, you don't see what's below, like the, the main level. You know, they, they show the, the banner here. But when I was walking my dogs today, they had on this at this center uh, some posters promoting this drug. The drug is called PrEP. And, you know, I've seen this advertisement on PrEP you know, in mass, when you take mass transit, you know, the train system, and they have all these advertisements all over. And some advertisements, they don't really tell you what it's for. They just say, hey, ask your doctor if it's uh, right for you. But they don't tell you what it's for. So, but I kind of had an idea what it was for because the type of people they had on the advertisement. But either way, it... Why this particular ad caught my attention was because of the people that they showed on the advertisement. Okay, I think it was at least two posters. And one poster was a group of people, uh, relatively young, 20s, 40s range. All of them look like black people, except for one. One was um, not sure what her race was. A uh, very light-skinned woman. Uh, she could have been Hispanic or a white person. I'm not sure. But uh, uh, a very light-skinned person. And then the second poster had two black men. One very dark, and they showed his a, a rear shot of him like from the waist up, and the partner, oh, and also his back is to the camera, and he's very well-developed, you know, very muscular, and the one to his, uh, his right was a brown-skinned fellow, brown-skinned black fellow, and um, they showed his front, you know, from the waist up, and he had a smile on his face, and it was about this thing called prep, and that you can get prep or find out about prep at this clinic it's a neighborhood clinic it's a it's a full service clinic let me even show you what services they have okay look at that they have it, it's, a, it's a full it looks like a full service they have an adolescent clinic adult medicine allergy cardiology dental dermatology nutrition even WIC, women's health it's a, a full-fledged health service for, you know, any community could use, okay? So I think that's great. I, I've never used it. I never used the um, services there, okay? And they go here and it goes in, you know, as you see here, they go in detail what each department handles, okay? Well, one thing that I saw that was problematic about it was that in one of the division, let me see if I can find it, that if you're between the ages of 13 and 21, you could use their, you, you, you can come in and use their services um, of, and, and it being confidential, you know? So if you're a 13-year-old and you want to find if you're pregnant, and if you want it, um, I don't know whether they actually do abortions there, they, but they said they do pelvic exams. I'm just looking for it right now. I don't remember where it was, but if I find it, I want to show you here on the screen. Let me go back to the home page. 
through sad thing now. But I, 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 I thought that was problematic because someone 13 year old to go and have someone do these invasive exams, giving them drugs, meds, um, you know, invasiveness. Let's say they have allergies. If they if they could lie to their parents about what they're doing, they could also lie to the doctor about what they're doing. They just want to get a particular thing. Maybe they want to get it for a friend of theirs, you know, and, and get, give it to their friend, this particular drug. It, it's really problematic when you're dealing with minors and whether they're going to use the meds or this, you know, it, it's problematic to put that responsibility on them, that it, the parents should be involved in it, you know. But either way, it, it this is what they do offer. I guess they feel, you know, the about two, two um, dangers, which one is more danger, dangerous, you know, which one does the least damage. Allowing minors to come in to get um, checked for certain diseases or if they're pregnant. And if they don't use the services because, let's say, they will let the, the families know, then they might say, okay, this could cause harm to the individual. Let's say they get pregnant and they, um, they bleed to death out of, you know, doing a, a self-abortion, you know. You know, the, you know, these type of things. I mean, it, it is a reality, but um, it, it was problematic for me. So either way, I mean, it's a, it's a service that they offer. It looks like a very nice place. But again, getting back to about HIV. Now, let me show you what this, okay. Oh, if I didn't say um, in detail, well, the, the post is about this drug was all people, all black people, primarily, except for this one person. Now, my issue regarding that is, well, HIV didn't start out with black people in, in the United States. I remember in the 1980s, early 1980s, she started to hear about AIDS and HIV. And the demographics back there was a little different. The demographics was primarily white men, male, white male homosexuals, and many of them were HIV drug users. Now we're getting this, these symptoms and everything, and then you know they gave it a, a, a term. It was a different term. They didn't use HIV back then. But they changed the term. And as you know it today, uh, HIV and AIDS. And so how is it that with the demographics that it started out in the United States, at least became known, re recognized in the United States, and the demographics associated with it, while now the demographics associated with the same virus is now uh, black people? Now, is HIV and AIDS an equal opportunity virus? On one level, I was told in school that it was. But there's statistics that, that's telling us that it's not opportunistic, that it targets black people more than whites. Okay? So... So what that means is, if you're a white person, and let's say you're an HIV drug user, and you share needles, and you're not clean, and you do acts that, you know, you, you, you engage in this sharing of needles with people who are infected with the HIV virus, and what are the chances of that person getting HIV? versus a black person who's doing the identical behavior and what their risk is in getting HIV. Now, 
according to this one statistics that, that I saw, that blacks overwhelmingly get HIV more than whites, even though they're doing the same behaviors. So it's questionable. Now, it's also questionable what happened from 1980 to fast forward to 2018 that here you have a neighborhood in Manhattan that, again, the demographics of this neighborhood is not overwhelmingly black at all. Black Americans, not at all. You have whites. You have Asians, new Asians, uh, a lot of them are new college graduates and it's their, you know, they just graduated and they got the, their first job and they're starting out in the, these uh, a, a nice new apartment. You have Hispanics who work in the food industry because that, that whole strip where that clinic is, it's our restaurants. And many of the workers there are from primarily Central America. You do have blacks that live there, but they were, in, in general, older blacks, uh, maybe in their 60s, 70s. They've been there for years. But young black families, no, vir virtually zilch. You, you really don't have that many black families there. Some but really not, not, not a major force. So with that in mind, if this area is primarily white and Asian and Hispanic with, of course, some black people, why is all the advertisement targeting blacks, and in particular, black males? Okay? So I'm a little confused. If, again, how did it jump from one demographics, white homosexuals, now to black men? And I was told at one point, maybe 10 years ago, that the fastest growing demographics of becoming infected with AIDS are heterosexual black women. So this is really problematic. And, again, the studies indicate that HIV is not an opportunistic disease and it seems to affect blacks over other demographics, even though you're doing the same thing, same risk factors, okay? What are whites doing that initially that they had it, that they had the disease in the 1980s to now seem to have it under control and you don't hear you don't hear about those same those uh, epidemics amongst this population what are white male homosexuals doing to to prevent themselves from getting HIV are they taking this drug called prep now if they are then it seems to be working for them, and how come they're not continuing with um, targeting them in their ads for them to encourage them to continue taking PrEP? Again, I don't know. I'm just speculating. I'm just throwing that out there, you know? But with blacks, you don't see all this target against black people from AIDS. But you, you don't see this. You don't see any positive results statistically. So I'm concerned. My other concern and why I'm doing this video is because with when you prepare a drug like PrEP, it's again it says here that um, that you take it if you do not have HIV and you want added protection as you see there. Now, why would you want to take a chemical, a foreign substance in your body, and you don't have HIV? Why would you take this substance? How is it going to destroy your, how, how is it going to affect your body? 
okay? Now, this HIV seems to target you at a higher rate for whatever reason. And then now, manufacturers are promoting this PrEP for the black population. Even though in this particular neighborhood that, that they're not as many people of that background there, but they're targeting them. So I, I asked myself that question. And the other question is, is this PrEP a substance that maybe doesn't make your body weaker? Does it, re does it, does it really block HIV from them? I mean, to just make it so that the virus isn't as opportunistic to affect you? Or to, you know, to just block it from getting into your, your body. I don't know. But I'm wondering whether or not, knowing that this disease, this, this virus, HIV, did not originate with you, but somehow it's overwhelmingly overrepresented in that community, and then now the uh, manufacturers of drugs introducing this new drug into a, a, a for people who don't have HIV again I have to stress that you don't have HIV but they want you to take it why do they want you to take it why don't they want to prevent white people from uh, this thing and targeting them or Asians or, or Hispanics or Native Americans you, you don't see this in their ads, but they're targeting you, the black American. So is this drug really something to protect you? Or is it really conditioning your body maybe to be susceptible to other types of, act, uh, of opportunistic viruses or diseases? Because remember with, um, oh, what's that name? It was that uh, Tuskegee. When they had, they were doing a, a, they were doing research about how syphilis works on the human body. And so they actually injected some men. These, this was a, a, a very poor group. This, it was a poor community of blacks. And they had given them injections of syphilis in them. Some of them already had syphilis, but they said, oh, we'll, we'll treat you for free. And they weren't. They were pretending to be treating them and just uh, maybe giving them a sugar pill or something. But they wanted to just study how the, how the disease really works. And that, I think they started this grisly research in the 1930s and it ended in 1972. So I'm wondering whether again, knowing that history of Tuskegee experiments on black men, whether the PrEP pill is something that's going to affect you, your health, the, the, the black people's health. Is this drug going to sterilize them? Is this going to make them susceptible for certain cancers or liver or kidney damage? What is it going to do? So I do this video to really, really try to open up the eyes to the black community or any community who are being targeted for this drug. Who knows what, what, it, what, what it really does? Now, my other concern was, let's say, okay, you, you're targeting a group, but this group might say, hey, well, if this prevents HIV, well, maybe I don't have to use any protection. I just take a, a PrEP and that's it. So I'm wondering whether it will actually increase other types of diseases, sexually transmitted diseases. I just think this is really a red flag 
I'm really, you know, it, in, in fact, they also offer this, this um, they, they're really open about it. They, they, they tell you, you know, when you could come in, you, could, you, should, you can just come in and, and get it. No, no appointment necessary. Boom. <laughs> they're making it real available to black people. So I say, you know, I'm, I'm just, as you see on the screen, you know, the, you know, you could look at it at your own leisure. You know, it's a whole, they give a whole litany of things, you know, questions. You know, why do I have to get tested for HIV before starting PrEP? Well, that's, a, that's interesting. Let me see what that says. Okay, if someone does have HIV, takes PrEP, their virus can develop resist to some medications used to treat the virus, which may limit future treatment options. Wow. Wow. You have to have to come back every three months. Wow. How long has PrEP been available? Let's see. Okay, this FDA. 2012. Wow. It's called true. Truvada. Okay, it's a blue tablet containing two medications. Okay, they give these names. And was first approved in 2004 as treatment for HIV in combination with other drugs. Interesting. So this is an, a treatment that, so if you do, so they did have it. So why is it now used for people who don't have HIV while when it was started in 2004, it was as treatment for HIV in combination with other drugs? I say, black people, anybody who hears this, please be careful what you put in your body. You want to prevent from getting HIV why don't you try abstinence? Abstinence is to abstain from sexual activity. And when you find a life partner to be with, be monogamous and just have that part that 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 partner to engage in activity with. I think that'd be the safest or again uh, IV drug users. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't, do, don't have that lifestyle. So you don't need that drug. See, that prevention, true prevention is taking control of your body and its urges and saying no and doing other options. They're, they're safer options than taking these substances that you don't know how it's going to affect you. And again, the fact that they're targeting a specific demographics, even though uh, it's that particular group is not really represented in that neighborhood, but they're targeting you, and blacks are going to see it. And it's like, oh, let me get into this. Like it's, they make it seem like a cultural thing. Hey, I want to look cool and taking this blue pill, <laughs> this blue pill to take for if you do not have HIV. They can do better than that. This isn't prevention. This is a disaster I, I, I foresee. So, again, I'm not a doctor or anything like this. I'm just a regular human being. I was just walking my dogs. And these advertisements. And they say it's to help you. But does it really? Don't forget your history. Talk to your family about the history of what happened to the black community. And because evidently this is, you know, this history about medicine and blacks is not being discussed. These manufacturers of these drugs. And I'm not saying that they, that necessarily prep is this way, but I'm just saying be careful because history shows that blacks are not treated the same when they're doing experiments. They're not there to really help you. That is my concern. This could be a legit drug. But I'm just saying be careful and study your history 
And if you don't want to get HIV or any sexually transmitted disease, to abstain from those activities that promote those diseases or conditions. And it's that simple. Make it simple. Make your life simple. And don't rely on pharmaceuticals to protect your body. You are to take control over your body, not letting others. And that's, that's my other fear, that they're going to take control of your health and then you just become a victim. Don't be the next victim. So that's all I have to say. And again, if you have any comments, please write them below. Please share this video with friends, family members. You can subscribe to my channel and to give me the thumbs up. Live safely in 2018. That is what I promote. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. This is a post note to the video I did regarding PrEP in the black community. What I realize about the medical field is that medicine isn't about treating diseases. Medicine, modern day medicine in the United States is about demographics. It's about first finding out who the person is in this demographics that is getting some type of medical attention. And then based on that demographics is how to treat them based on that demographics. My experience with my medical history, the last part of my medical history about regarding reproductive health was, in my opinion, based on race and finance. Even though I had insurance, so money wasn't so much the issue because it was something that was being paid for and then I paid out of my pocket, you know, with my insurance. So whatever I had to pay, I just paid it uh, with what I owed. But either way, I feel that the decision on my medical treatment, my reproductive uh, treatment was about exploitation to make sure that this demographics does not have children. And I feel it's about control and about preventing the growth of certain demographics and promoting other people's demographics. So if you're a person of color, or you're perceived as being poor, you are considered a risk to the state. And the first protocol when this occurs is sterilization. This is genocide. This is not medicine. And that is my real issue regarding the drug PrEP or any other pharmaceutical that's targeted amongst people, you know, amongst black people in particular. This is a form of warfare against you. So be aware because this is war against you.